Hello and welcome, my name is Rebecca. Today we're going to be planting this rainbow chard from the Diggers Club heirloom selection. Or it's called five colour mix. There's pink, yellow, red, green, sometimes there's white. I've been really enjoying rainbow chard, but I only have a few plants. So we'll pop this one down here with the carrot graveyard. So I only have these couple of plants here, which you can see I've been picking a lot, and these. And then I've got a couple more. This is all beetroot in the back, so I don't want to be cutting those leaves until they are ready to fully come out. So I've got, this is where we're going to plant in here got a big patch of nothing probably all in here too I put in some basil in the shade of the purple broccoli that never flowered there's another one the blueberry is flowering for its first time which is very exciting and then so over here is the other uh, couple of plants of chard so it's not much and most of them, this is a, yeah, they're all yellow, which I love the yellow one, but I love the pink. And there's a red vein with green leaves, which I really, really like as well. And there's a pink, which I also really like. I accidentally pulled out a pink one thinking it was a beetroot and there was no root. And this is all the potatoes doing very well. I just pulled out the cauliflower and I'm just gonna rebuild this wall a bit. And I'm gonna plant, cause these are planted in rows, one square foot, one potato per square foot. So I'm gonna put some sweet potato in between as like a ground cover. Um, so I'm gonna harvest the 50 liter worm bin and we're gonna start a new worm bin here or sort of like large compost worm bin pile because I couldn't afford to buy another big compost bin. And I've decided that I'm gonna finish up this uh, worm bin because it's quite full and I wanna start using the compost. So I've just added a final layer of cardboard and these little guys are, um, where are they? They are um, black soldier fly larvae and they actually compost faster than earthworms. So they're perfectly happy in there with your earthworms. So I'm just gonna leave this open now and let it finish and I'll compost down. So I need somewhere where I can start adding my other compost. So I'm just gonna leave the lid off and I'll pop it back on if we get heavy rain. And I'll make sure this top layer stays moist. So to get the bed ready for planting, we're going to harvest the worm castings. Uh, this is the other cauliflower, all chopped up, plus some other stuff I've been harvesting, a heap of leeks and the chard, whatever rubbish we have, and the old zucchini leaves. So I munched all that up, mixed it up. So this is going to go as a chop and drop with the worm castings on top. I'm also going to be cleaning out this fish tank. This is my new little project. This tank was doing really badly and I decided to turn it into a apple snail sanctuary because as you can see on these new guys that I've dropped in, where's one that we can see? Well, we can see here he's got all this back shell is what in here is what their whole shell looked like. We had them in with a heap of discus and I think the discus were pecking at the shells for some reason. You can see it on this one. And so they are growing back nice, new, beautiful shells. And this little guy is my favorite. I love his color. He's got little orange spots on him, just like the yellow ones do. Super cute, they're lots of fun. They eat these little algae wafers. 
and it's also a bit of a plant sanctuary so I've bought these Elodia um, because I want to put them in the turtle tank but he just eats them and destroys them so we'll grow them in here they're super expensive at the moment they want ten dollars for a bunch so I'm just gonna grow my own and we've got some beautiful different types of sword plants and I have another lot of sword plants from another tank which I want to plant it's a whole runner row which I'll show you in a minute and I'm gonna plant that in the front so we get some beautiful swords and we've also got this plant I can't remember what they're called but they're super expensive we got a heap of them when we bought a cheap tank off Gumtree and they're just growing really well I've just tied them to different things they like the rhizome out of the water these guys can be buried but I've also tied them to rocks just for fun and then we have a pair of our discus that we bred ourselves which was a blue turquoise and a oh, what do you call them um, um, um pigeon blood orange pigeon blood so we've got a female here and a male there and I'm hoping they might have some little babies and so a lodia can float or you can tie it to a rock or you can bury it so we're going to change that and the fish poo we're going to put on the garden in our new planting and this tank does not have a filter I'm just using the aerator and I'm doing once a week or twice a week small water changes all right so I'm ready to harvest the worm bin and I think I'm just going to harvest half of it so that I because I didn't buy any uh, cocoa coil and that way we'll have enough bedding for the worms to go into our bucket. Got Frankie here, ready to help. So here we go. That's, oh, I'll just move that. They've been happily munching away on these papers there they are. Hello. There's some more. They just love um, catalogues and newspapers and it doesn't matter if it's printed. You should be using what you've got. So these were just a heap of catalogues. Oh, there's a isopod. How cute. Oh, bye bye. Um, you should be using what you've got because that's really the aim of the game is to use what you've got and create from that. These are, check out this. They just make it into tiny little shavings. Might pop them in the bucket. And they eat it down. So you want to recycle what you're already using, the waste that you already have. So I got these because I used to do a catalogue run and these were left over. Um, otherwise I just use all the cardboard from like cat food um, and the little snacks that I buy the girls and stuff like that. Ugh, it's very moist. And then we've got some pumpkins growing. You can just pull them out once they're dead. Like they won't eat them if they're alive, but once they're dead because you pull them out, they'll eat them. And there's still a bit of food in here because it was big and chunky. Get my bucket back. So any bits of food, like stuff on the top they haven't eaten. We'll just let them keep that. We don't need that for our garden. There's tons of worms here. Alright. There's a bit more. Yeah, they eventually eat it. Doesn't matter if it's printed. Alright. We're here. We're in worm territory. So, we'll get our get the sieve. This is the bucket we're going to collect. Girl's been playing with some aquarium stones. That's no big deal. So then we're going to scoop a heap of stuff into here and sort through it. Separate the worms out. Go. Put that on there. 
up the endless just to be the quickest way is to pick them out. Let's <coughs> put that there and then we can we can drop them in. And if there's a big ball of them you can just pick it up. And then whatever's left on here um, in this colander we tip into the bucket underneath. And if anyone escapes through the holes they just drop into the bucket. So it might seem like a lot of effort to um, do this and the chop and drop just to plant some plants but you only really do it once and then those plants once they get big enough are going to feed you for months like six months and so when we put the vermicompost on top you know we're recycling our plant waste from our last crop and then when we put the vermicompost on top that is going to feed our plants and then our worms there'll be even though i'm picking out the big worms there'll be some left and there'll be some eggs in there as well so the eggs will be left and they're going to hatch and when they hatch they can eat all that green waste or the layer of green waste that i put on there and they can poop and make more vermicompost directly on the bed and the organic matter that's breaking down is going to help with all the soil life that needs to be there for the plants to grow. And here they are going in there. So I'm getting to the bottom now and I've seen this bit of plastic which is I'm pretty sure I started this with a cardboard box so don't worry about it when you harvest your castings you can just pick these bits out and then this I always find these bits and I think that's from when I rip up the cardboard or the catalogs but I can't tell exactly where that is in the cardboard or the catalogs but anyway you just pick them out no big deal so don't worry about putting plastic in there because when you go through and you are uh, and you can see like there's still some oh I thought that was cardboard but it's a corn cob with some little wormy party in there um yeah they'll eat through the cardboard box and they'll eat through um any of the newspaper or cardboard stuff you know packaging that you put in there and if there's plastic in it, you'll find it when you're going through it and you just pick it out. I think that's just a bit of cardboard that's not eaten yet. And that's some eggshells. So just leave it in there till it does get eaten. And there has just been so many worms in here. Oh, I know what that is. That's from those peat pots. And that's the outside, you know, layer. And I have left these in there so many times. They take forever to break down. There's a little baby. So, uh, yeah, peat pots, when they say that the roots are just going to grow through it and it'll break down, it takes a really, really, really long time for that to break down. So this is where I'm at. That's all my castings. There's a few little worms in there. Like, I don't pick out these tiny ones. We just pick out the really big ones. And we keep them and as I said these tiny ones that are left um, they are just gonna grow up and eat the chop and drop on the garden so I'm gonna keep going and I think I'm just gonna really harvest about half and then I'll put some in the new bucket and some I'll leave in here but yeah just keep Going through it, pick out any worms you find, just the big ones. And they don't have teeth or legs, so they're not scary, they're not going to bite you. See? And just drop them in. Alright, so I've halfway filled my bucket with worm compost. And I've only harvested this much of the bucket, like a quarter. So, and then this is our, all the worms that we pulled out. And there's got to be like a thousand 
webs in there. Look at them. So we're going to take those and put them in the new bin. I found another one of these things. Like, what is that? I don't know. And then what I might do is I'll leave all these guys in here. Unless I'm going to have some more later. I'll just collapse that all a little bit. Come out. Because I'm going to pop some food on top. Just spread them out. Oh, you see how many worms there are left. Oh, look at this guy. They're so cute. Um, I'm going to put some food on top and then we'll put all that paper back on top and they'll continue to have a good time. I'm going to clean Turtle's tank so he can go outside for a walk while I'm out there doing the gardening and we will drain his tank. So we're just going to catch him. Come on buddy. <sighs> That's a bit scared. Come here bud. Gotcha. Ooh, so strong. Alright, let me get him. Didn't record when I picked him up out of his tank, but here he is. He's gonna chill outside, go for a little walk. He likes to walk all the way down the side there while I'm doing the gardening, and I will drain his tank and get it all cleaned up for him. So whenever I'm gardening, I'm normally doing the fish tanks as well. And that's half the reason I put the garden in, is because you waste so much water cleaning these tanks. And it's full of all the um, nitrate, uh, yeah, nitrate and bacteria and organisms that would be great for the garden, for the plants to be eating. Um, I don't normally put turtles water on the um, plants. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, because I'm not really sure. They're pretty dirty animals. I'm not sure how good his poop is, but I always put the fish tank water on. But turtles water just goes straight up onto the grass. So I'll give it a scrub and I'll let that drain while I'm messing about in the garden. Oh, there he goes. I'm going for his little walk, exploring the backyard. Getting some vitamin D. And then when he's finished, he'll just come to the back door. So then I've just got the tank draining onto the grass here. There he goes. He's a bit scared because I'm looking at him. So let's get into it. Oh, just trip over the cauliflower. Alright. So we need to move. Just take the mulch off the top. Now this is like really deep mulched because there was no soil there. So I just put a deep layer of mulch. So this is a pretty um pretty new garden. Oh it smells nice. Uh, here's our where we do have some soil and it looks so nice and there was a worm there I don't want to dig too much into it oh, here's some more soil so this is like the real divot part I'm gonna keep that nice wall there tomato there. I don't want to bury it. There's a tomato near that stick. Alright. I don't have to dig down too far because it can even go on top of the mulch. Make a nice little wall. Oh, here comes turtle. Here he comes. Alright, so we'll grab our Chop and drop. Oh, 
Just grab big handfuls. Fill it in. Here we come. So I think he's going towards the inside. He can stay outside a little bit longer. His shell hasn't even dried out. I was wrong. He just went around me. He's going to go down the side of the house. Alright, so I put a whole bucket's worth on there, which is about an inch layer. And then I'll put the vermin compost on top, about the same, an inch or two inches, and then we're going to plant into it. There he goes, he's back at the back door, wanting to be let in, but he's not been out very long. So he can keep exploring outside for a bit. So I've just given these guys a water and I'm going to separate them ready for planting. They're not all going to fit in that bed, but I'll just put them wherever they fit. So this is one of the red ones I was talking about. This is, there's a green one. It's got like green and white stalks. And we just pick off these crappy leaves. Uh, we've got a couple of small ones. Let's put them all together. I think they're all going to be pink. Put them in a separate pile so we'll plant them um, separately, like planting all the big ones together and small ones. Here's a pink one. Uh, another small one. You get so many plants out of one punnet. And another of the red ones that I like. And so we'll do another. I've got lots of different ones. Red, pink, and there's a yellow here. So already we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plants. For four dollars. Some more pinks. Gotta find somewhere to put all of these. Had not enough and now I'm going to have too many. But you can freeze it. It's really good frozen. You can go with the small ones. Big ones. Hmm. That one doesn't really have much root, neither does that. They might have to go compost bin. The only problem is you lose half your plant when you're separating them. Oh. Okay, I'll just leave that. All right, that's probably gonna be enough for that area. So we'll take these guys and we'll get them in. All right, we've got all the um, vermi compost on. I didn't use all of it. I might go like three, six, nine. That's about a square foot. Nine to a square foot. It's supposed to be four, but just go for it. And then you want to bury it all the way up to its little bum there. And firm it in. That's a yellow. Let's do a red. See so all the way up to this where the leaves are. Let's dig a deeper hole. It's quite deep here. And let's do a green one. They'll be all pretty different colours. What else? All pink. Is it pink? I'm gonna bury it right up to here. Not too far. It's kind of a little bit difficult one-handed, and then we'll smooth all around. Push it down because we're gonna put that compost back on top. And I think this is a pink. So let's put it there. Maybe we'll get some different colours because these are all pink. So let's make the hole. One. Oh, that's a turtle. Hi, turtle. He's still cruising around. Two. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is a red. Let's put, hmm, probably want some yellows there and some greens. What about a red here? Bury it all the way up. Firm it in. These are beans, by the way, snake beans. And I am questioning my decision to put it right on the edge there. So I was hoping it would go down, but they kind of like go up towards the sun, which makes sense. Okay, I've got. I think that's a red. You can go there. And then we'll look in the punnet for some um, greens and yellows. And let's stick it pink here. Alright, still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spots. Maybe eleven. Let's go have a look. Alright, let's look in our punnet. This one has yellows and pink. A bit root bound. Alright. I want a couple of yellows. Oh, there's a green there too. Uh, there. Good one. If I don't stuff up separating it. Keep it pinks. The pink ones are really beautiful once they get bigger. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that's the yellow. And oh, that could be a yellow too. Yellows, pinks. Hmm. There's a couple of greens over here. There. Pretty sure that's a green. You can actually see what's going on. Oh, Frankie's back. Hey, Frank. She went over the fence before. Oh, yeah, she's fine with the turtle, but I had to put the dogs away. No, anyway, back to this. Okay. Let's try and get it separated. Green and a red. Put that with the little one. Yeah, it's got to be green. Look at it yet next to the yellow. Okay. Alright. And then we've got some pinks. So. Pinky pink. Some of them are more pink than others. I can separate them. Okay. Let's take all these. Over to the wall. Alrighty, let's keep planting. So let's put a yellow here. And then we have our green. Let's put that here. That's a really nice plant actually. So them over a bit, how do you do? That is a nice one. Now we'll smooth all this down so that we can um, keep them nice and firm in there and put our mulch back. Right, what else we got? Could probably pop a, oh here's a bit, it should be over here. It's a bit out of line. There. Get over there. Yes, a pink. Can probably go here. Or a reddish. That's what we don't have a lot of now is red. It's all pink and yellow. Alright, can go there. Uh, what else? We got another pink. Yep. 
Although it's just the root that looks pink on that one. It might be a green. Uh, this one. Is it yellow? Is it green? We don't know. It could go here. Thin it up, firm it in. So dog's barking at the turtle. He might be right around the side there. Uh, yellow. Can come over here. Oop, there's a wimmy. Sorry, buddy. Dig back in. And we'll put another pink there. We'll put a green here. Oh, we've got a yellow. He could go there. Alright, so I want some more pinks. That's all that done. So I've got one here and one here. And we'll try and make them pink. Alright, our lovely little forest of rainbow chard is planted. And now we're going to put a thick layer of compost all the way around. Just don't want to bury their uh, stems. And that's going to keep them and the worms underneath very, very happy. Oh. I don't know what that noise was. The turtle tank is done. So then we'll have to go find turtle. Alright, so we're all finished planting. I've got the mulch back on. It's nice and thick, but you've got to make sure that middle part is still standing out and there's that tomato that I didn't want to bury and we put a little bit more around the leeks there and Turtle is on his way back to his tank and I'm just refilling it for him now he went all the way around the side here he comes by the time he gets to the door, the tank will probably be nearly finished. Well, halfway there. He'll be able to hop back in. Hey, buddy. What up? This is one hand. Gotcha. Oh, oh, I got weeds all over you, bud. Alright, let's go. Got him by the bum. It's very strong, though. Here we are. The tank's filling up. And the top. That's a bit cleaner, isn't it? Alright, so it is time to change the water in here and a good telltale sign you need to change it is these bubbles. I've got a couple of floating plants too, they're doing well. And so there's just, they've eaten all the algae wafers already, it's only been a couple of hours. And look, there's little orange spots on the cute, can you see it? There. And oh, that's, there's an algae wafer there. I'm like, why are they on top of each other? So uh, let's get started. Right, got the siphon going and I've got to remember that it's going into a bucket. So here we go. So I'm going to suck up all the poop. See all that? That's all the good stuff plus whatever's in the water column. And that 
has got to come out and get some fresh water but the plants are going to enjoy that as a bit of organic fertilizer yum 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 all right so i've just i've emptied just a tiny bit of water i want to empty up to about here and We've already got pretty much a full bucket and look how dirty that is with fish poo. So you can see how much water goes out of a water change and why you would want to recycle it into your garden. Right, so I'm just going to use a smaller bucket. I'd like to use a watering can with a rose but all these little particles get stuck in the rose which is very annoying. So we'll just very carefully water all around the plants. And that's it, we're all done. So this is the run out of sword plants that I was talking about. So I'm just gonna chop that off there and there and plant the whole row in the other tank. This is our six foot tank, which needs a bit of work because look at that algae. So I've emptied out about this much water and I'm filling it back up and I will plant the row of plants down here. Alright, so the snails are very happy now that I changed the water. And these are the new plants. And they're a total pain in the bum to plant because they're all connected. But hopefully they'll grow and they'll look really nice. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.